Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia. Welcome to Blue Rain Gallery podcast. Today we have a wonderful artist extraordinaire and Hiram Joe visiting us. Welcome, Hiram, to the office uh, studio. <laughs> it's, it's an honor to be here today. Yeah. We're, we're going to have, have some fun. Yeah, have some fun. <laughs> fun. Um, I always start everybody off with, like, tell me about uh, where you were born and where you grew up and uh, a little bit about your childhood. Yeah, so I'm a native New Mexican. Um, grew up in Shiprock, New Mexico, Four Corners area. Um, yeah, parents were pretty close there as well. And uh, childhood was great. You know, grew up with an artistic family, um, specifically an artistic uh, father, um, who obviously you know show, showed me what I could do. I guess. Having a career as an artist. And what's your dad's name? Orland Joe. Orland. You knew yeah. that. Uh, I knew that, but the audience, we got to get them going. Yeah. Yeah, good good brother Orland Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I grew up on the reservation, had a little bit of a reservation life, and was just kind of exposed to, you know, the idea of no paved sidewalks or, you know, grassy parks, things like that. It was just dirt and rocks and sticks. And so the interesting about that lifestyle was I can now as an artist remember what that was like back then and um a lot of the a lot of that lifestyle is in my paintings now i can go back and think of oh i used to you know walk to my grandma's and she always had you know a pile of fried bread and you know just kind of put my head in there and she'd invite me in and you know um and then an hour later i've had four fried breads and we're talking and she's talking to me in navajo uh, picking up words and things like that. So I love being able to, in my mind, going back to the, to those experiences on the res and they influence my artwork a lot. Um, so, yeah. It's nice to be around family and, and culture, right? Uh, Absolutely. I don't, I don't know what I would paint if I didn't. <laughs> culture. So did, did, are you fluent in another one? <clears throat> I'm not. Uh, I, I wish I was. You just know the bad words? It, yeah, yeah. Those are the first ones you usually <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Spanish, it doesn't matter. That's the one that, the, the ones, the teacher friends, you know, they cry on that. But yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your dad and his influence on you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your dad and his art career. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's, he actually did really, really well in his career. Um, he, he got lucky in a lot of, a lot of different areas. Um, his career just took off pretty early. He had an early age. Uh, so as a kid, you're just kind of oblivious to those type of things. You know, you don't think much about it. Um, I was, mm, I think I was 10 when we moved off the reservation. Uh, so he had his own little shack slash studio <laughs> uh, there behind our trailer um, uh, on the res in Shiprock. And um, now, nah, like, dad was working all the time. He was gone. Mom was, you know, cooking. And uh, she was a stay-at-home mom. And so, you know... And dad would be all dusty, you know, he'd be all white walking into the house for lunch and then he'd have a sandwich and head back out and he was doing, I don't know, probably eight to 10 hour days, things like that. But, um, yeah, he was gone, gone doing shows on the road a lot as well. Mom was home. So I, I didn't really see a whole lot of dad, but I, but I knew what he was doing. And I come from a family of six kids. I'm the oldest of six. <clears throat> and, um, once we made the move to Kirtland, just off the reservation, he was able to buy a bigger home to fit us. <laughs> he had eight people living in a trailer. In the house. Uh, but uh, yeah, so he was able to uh, build a nice studio behind our home and, you know, a bigger area. And that was, that was nice. And um, yeah, so I, you know, um, I don't know that I had much of an interest in art. Uh, I found out like fifth, made sixth grade that I could draw. Um, it was okay. It was fun um, knowing that you had a little bit of talent, but I didn't know that that's what I wanted to be. Um, so, you know, I'd walk into dad's studio and just, you know, he had workers there. He had hired, hired two or three workers and, um, you know, you hear power tools going and dust flying and there's just stone, like rocks everywhere. Um, you know, ACDC blasting on the radio, things like that, you know. And I mean, it was a creative environment and I um, was exposed to that just, just about every day. And that was really, really cool to see. But um yeah, it was kind of yeah. what it was like for us. I think uh, Orlin uh, was one of the first Native artists to be accepted into the Cowboy Association. Yeah, of fa- artists, fast right? forward <laughs> some years. Uh, yeah, the Cowboy Artists of America is a, a group of, it's an organization of artists, pretty prestigious, of Western uh, fine art uh, paintings and, and sculptors, painters and sculptors. Um, I don't remember how old he was or what year. In 1993 is when he got um, inducted into that and yeah, like you said, he was the first Native American to be 
That was a big deal. To be in that. And it was a big deal. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And his career just you know, kind of took off since then. A trailblazer. So what exactly did your dad do? So he's a stone carver. Um, he got into that medium in high school, actually. Actually, no, 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 no. It, yeah, actually it was high school. Never mind. Okay. I, probably his senior year. Um, so his art teacher had a really, really impactful influence on him. Uh, so there was no stone carving on, on the res at the time. I mean, was, we got Alan Hauser, right? And he was kind of the only one that was really doing that, or at least, you know, most well known for that. Um, I don't even think my dad knew who he was. Uh, so my dad did sand painting. He did jewelry, beadwork, you know, um, paintings. Uh, so his art teacher brought a piece of alabaster stone into class one day and gave it to him. He said, hey, I want you to take this home and carve it and bring it back to me when you're finished. So he did that, and um, he brought it home, and he didn't know what to do with it. He just kind of sat there looking at it. Like, it was a chunk maybe the size of a, I don't know, about like that. Anyway, um, so he grabbed a, a butter knife, I believe, a butter knife and a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and just started carving and carving and carving, and pretty soon he turned into an eagle's head, <laughs> like a bald eagle's head. Brought that back to his teacher, and she was like, okay, yeah, we, we, we have somebody who has some talent here. So that was kind of how we got introduced to that medium, so thanks to our teacher. And um, so obviously learned, you know, what tools he needed to use and got more and more stone, and the teacher didn't have any more stone. <laughs> he could buy his own stone now. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that turned into, you know, <clears throat> taking his sculptures down to the local trading post in Shiprock. And um, I remember going with him at times, you know, I'd just jump in the truck and go down to the trading post. And, um, you know, he'd sell to the trader there, dealer, whatever you want to call it, you know, $35 here, $50 here. Pretty soon it was 150 and just kind of went up from there. And But he did have a side job at a, a grocery store. as a stock boy for a while. You know, he's just doing a couple, couple other jobs on the side. Um, so that was the reservation. That was the beginning of his career. I, rem I remember all that, being the oldest. So that was kind of cool to see. But, uh, you know, when you're a kid, you just you don't know what's going on. You just take everything for granted. Oh, mom and dad will always you know, they'll take care of us. And, but, uh, but, yeah, so that grew into being inducted into the Cowboy Artists uh, of America group and, um, you know, awards. And I remember he had a studio in the trailer back in Shiprock. And um, if you, it, was, it was probably about a space about like this, a room about this big. And all the way around, there was ribbons that just started one corner, it, mm -hmm. and all around just met like like they were probably from Indian market, red, red and blue markets. ribbons. Yeah, 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 absolutely Indian market for sure. Um, and so there was that, and then there was just you know there's war bonnets now and beadwork and moccasins and you know those type of things that you know that were hung like a little museum or something. Um, but he'd be in there sand painting and, and working and carving and things like that. And um, I remember seeing that, and then eventually he got his his uh, studio outside and um and then we moved to Kirtland and uh so that's kind of how uh, the the beginnings of uh his career were yeah started well it seems like that probably had uh a subtle Im impact on you probably as you got older right when did you when did you decide you wanted to go into art did you go to school for for art so uh kind of <laughs> i didn't <clears throat> i don't have a degree um i i don't I wanted. I knew that when I left, when I graduated high school, I I knew that I didn't want to do art. I just I don't know what it was. I mean, by then I was already selling drawings in high school for. I did them for my friends, and I knew I could do it. I just didn't see myself. I have no idea why I, I didn't want to pursue that. Um, but, I, but I had this football coach. The head football coach at that high school in Kirtland was really, you know, kind of my mentor and just this person who was significant who you know who met a lot in my life and um just being out on the football field you know the games and practice and he's pushing me and my teammates and I really looked up to him but he was uh he was the history teacher there at the school and then he was the head football coach and I thought you know I, I want to do that I, I love history and I love sports so why not combine the two so I moved down to uh Phoenix went to Mesa Community College right after high school a friend and I got a little apartment there and just started our own lives and um, I needed an elective, so I, I you know, I, saw, I was looking at a list. I was like, okay, drawing 101. Let's give that a try. So, uh, school started and and just loved that class. It, my grades were like C, C, B, C plus, 
and then A. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> a nice know, progression. This, this gets, yeah, consistency is in the art class. So I just, again, you know, um, meeting my art teacher there, the instructor just was this uh, profound impact on me. My God, he, this, this guy, I mean, he was, he was good himself. But the way he taught, he, he pushed you. He, he actually reminded me of my football coach in high school. Um, you know, he, he, he didn't take any BS. You know, he, he wanted serious students. Uh, so I walked into class thinking, you know, a little cocky. You know, I could draw, you know, um, draw well. And it turns out that I was probably like bottom four talent-wise. <laughs> <laughs> I, hum- I was humbled really quick. And that was a good thing for me, 18 years old, um, not knowing, you know, what life's about. But I, I love the class, and he hired you know live models, and, and there were nude models, and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Um, rem- reminded me of Titanic. I was like, I'm actually living this, thing, <laughs> doing the same. So you know that was that was an eye opener. But yeah, no, he he was in your face, like down to the nitty gritty type of a guy, and um, gosh, he, he pushed me and pushed me. And by the end of the class, uh, or by, I'm sorry, by the end of the semester, I was I was I think I was doing pretty good. I took another class the next semester. Um, and he started to notice, uh, you know, um, the, the talent getting better. And so he would tell me things like, uh, you know, he, he kind of pulled me aside and said, yeah, you've got this talent, Hiram, and, you know, you're going to make a great artist someday, but, but you need to do this. Let, let's work on this. And, uh, but he was always encouraging. He, he was very honest, very brutally honest. I remember there was a couple of kids that quit, quit the class because he, he just couldn't take his... Which, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I believe I took three more of his classes after that, and I just... You know, I was maybe 20 at the time, and, and I said, yeah, I think I'm done here. I think I got what I need here. Um, and then I moved back to New Mexico, moved back home, uh, splurged on $500 worth of supplies, you know, easel. I got everything, oil paints, you know, charcoal sticks, you name it, sketch pads. And I just, you know, my, my dad basically was just like, okay, you, you feel like you're, you're ready. Let, let's start this out. You know, let's get you hooked up with the, your first show. Let's do eight little pencil drawings, and then let's see what you can do with that. So uh, <laughs> I remember um, we got hooked up with uh, the Gallery Nation's powwow in Albuquerque, oh, yeah. and they have a, the big tent with the, you know the artists uh, display their artwork. And um, another friend of mine was kind of an up and coming artist too, so we decided to you know take the trip together and share a hotel and food and all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, so we split the booth fee and all that, and um, I sold my first drawing for. Was it one hundred and fifty dollars or something like that? The first day of the show, the second day, I sold another one for, I don't know, two hundred or something like that. And so he was driving home after the show. We were tired. It's first show ever I've ever done. Great experience. Met a lot of people, but I remember I kept pulling out my wallet, counting my money over. It's like, <laughs> it like three, four hundred maybe. I, I don't know, but uh, that that was my first experience, and um, it was it was addicting. I thought, okay, man, this is better than flipping burgers. Well, like my uh, my first encounter with you, uh, probably twenty plus years ago, uh, was your drawings. They're they're spectacular. I mean, your your oil paintings are great, but your drawings seem, that's where you start. Yeah, that's where it all starts. Um, where did you learn to uh, develop your your brushstroke in your paintings? Because that's uh, kind of unique too, yeah. right? Y- yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking s- at my paintings. I'm like, uh-huh. mm, yeah, you're, you're right. I guess I do have that. Uh, affecting them um y- you know I, I, a lot of it was just I, I think studying uh, so Howard Turpening was was a big influence on on my paintings because that's what I was gonna say the the style uh kind of has its essence in there a little bit the yeah stroke, yeah it's, yeah the way so, you're p- building mm-hmm. up the paint sure so just looking at art magazine you know, Southwest art magazine at the time was huge you know so I'd always I sort of subscribed to that and I just wanted to look and see who the top dog was, right? And I wanted to see, to see that painter and be like, okay, I, I'll probably never be as good as he is or she is, but I mean, at least, you know, I can look to them, gauge my work against them, and, and that's going to make me better. Howard probably was the first guy to, to have that impact on me. Um, there's another guy by the name of Richard Schmidt, and then I looked at John Singer Sargent's work. Um, I also looked at uh, Nikolai Fetchin's work, and these you know, the I same just, type of stroke, right? Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. so they all had that like unfinished impressionistic look to them. I thought, that's a painting, you know. And I thought, what? Why? Why make a painting or try to create a painting that looks like a photograph? Like that's that's crazy. You know, some, somebody who can make a painting look like a like a, like a photograph. It's, I mean, that's that's a crazy amount of talent there. 
to be able to do that because not many people do that. But I thought, I, I don't want my paintings to look like that. I want it to make it look like a painting. I want to add color and brush strokes. And, you know, I want to get that your... painterly feel. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's a little bit undone, like this painting up here, I don't know if you can see it, but towards the bottom, I just thought, you know what? This doesn't need to be done. The viewer is going to get the idea. Like the focal point is, is that, you know, the face or whatever. And it's like, just get a little undone at the bottom. And that, that's art to me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, Did you ever, uh, uh, in your, being in your dad's world a little bit, get to meet Howard Turpinine or any of yeah. these superstars? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm glad you asked that. So, uh, I don't think I was even married yet. I was probably 20, 21 at the time. So right out of school, um, uh, they had the Cowboy Artist of America show in Phoenix at the time. And um, so my dad invited me to come along. I thought, great, you know, you could meet some artists and just kind of get some exposure to, you know, you know the big time of, of the art world. And so, yeah, uh, so they all stayed at the same hotel. It was a Ritz-Carlton in Phoenix. And so, you know, we were there, and I just happened to, to catch Howard just... You know, right I've seen pictures of him. He's a celebrity. <laughs> well, his, his, his work is fantastic. I mean, uh, uh, Fetchin is my favorite of all. But uh, Oh, yeah? Howard, uh, I didn't know that. That's Howard cool. is a, a, a great artist. I, I, I remember delivering uh, one of my ex's uh, pots to uh, Mrs. Autry in, in Palm Springs. And I walk in her home and just huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of the largest Howard Turpinines I've ever seen. Yeah. Be beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really That's nice. That's cool. I would um, love to have seen that. I noticed uh, yesterday uh, John Coleman posted uh, a painting that sold for, what, $300,000? $318,000. Yeah. Now, did you ever uh, meet him? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I met Howard at the hotel, you know, years ago. And he, um, to answer your question about meeting him, he... Um, so we started talking art and um i actually had a couple of my paintings with me at the time uh, a couple two drawings and a painting i think anyway and he offered to take a look at them i thought great mm -hmm. <laughs> so i brought him down we, we, we scheduled the time and i brought him down and he looked at him and he he just he was in awe like wow you know how old are you again and i was just you know, he did great things to say so that was my first encounter with howard uh and then john john came in um some years later, I want to say probably 2000 and maybe, if, I don't even know, six, seven, something like that. Uh, I met him in Prescott, Arizona, and uh, I did a show out there. He was doing the same show. It was the, the, the Fippin Memorial uh, Western Art Show uh, there in Prescott. Um, so that's when I first met him. I was exposed to his sculptures for the very first time. And, um, of course, he later on as well got into the Cowboy Artists of America yeah. group. Um, so we, we hit it off right away. I met his wife and everything. We were nice people. And my wife at the time, you know, we, we kind of just started to buddy up. And we, so we started meeting people down in Prescott. We started going every year. And we thought, man, this is a beautiful place, a beautiful area. It's certainly better than, you know, where I grew up. <laughs> and, and it, it's more of a the little, art little culture. Town. Yeah, yeah the, the art culture there was, was big. And I thought, okay, well, we're closer to Phoenix. You know, it's kind of, you know... Um, Maybe we have some connections down in Scottsdale or something like that as well. So anyway, we decided to make the move from New Mexico to Prescott, and we just buddied up, became really good friends, started having lunches together. And he, it's like John kind of had, um, he had something that I, or I'm sorry, he, I had something that he wanted, and then I had, he had something that I wanted. I wanted his success. I wanted his drive. I wanted to know the business side. And wow, how are you making this happen? You know, and then being Native American, he's like, "You've got models. You know, <laughs> you know, you have beautiful models. And and how do you get that?" And I'm just like, "Well, they're just family members and friends and things like that." So, you know, he'd ask about my models, and I tell him, and he would share my culture with him, and he you know, take him mental notes, and then I'd be like, "John, well, how do you do this? And you know, how do you do with galleries?" And so it's like we kind of had that trade off, and it was great. We just we just became really good friends from that. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he he went to um, he had a show at Legacy Gallery in Scottsdale, and I was able to go down to that and hang out with him for a little bit. And they did a little auction on that big painting, and that sold for over three hundred for a good okay. chunk. Yeah, <laughs> and, and again, the inspiration kicks in, and yeah. it's like, oh, well, I'm happy for him. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, you well, the reason I bring up these names is um, you've been blessed to be around a lot of major artists, from your dad to Howard to. John and many, Absolutely. many others. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you've you're developed your style, your subject matter. Let's talk about that. Uh, a lot of it seems derivative from the Shiprock area. And it seems to me over the years, you, you do paint a lot of like your, your children in there and 
family scenes, maybe? I have, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what, what inspires you to do that? So I just, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I want to, I just want to capture reservation of life. Um, whether it's, I mean, I did a painting one time of, of my ex-wife and my two daughters in, the, in a Hogan and, you know, mom's making fried bread. I've got the blue bear, bluebird flower sack sitting out there on the table and they, the girls are just making a mess with the, with the flower and, you know, but I've got the, you know, the old stove in the background and, and that kind of setting, it's just, I mean, people can relate to that kind of thing. You know, it's like, oh, it's just, you know, basic, you know, native lifestyle, but, but it, it could go on with, with an Anglo family or a Hispanic family, whatever. Um, and um, so I, I just, I had the cutest kids in the world, so why not use them in my paintings, man? <laughs> they are cute. They're and her beautiful wife, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to bring that out. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, we just we collect stuff over the years, you know, velvet shirts and, you know, moccasins and turquoise and things like that. And it was just, they, the girls especially had fun just dressing up. To them, it was like, you know, playtime. Oh, let's dress up in these, you know, Navajo type of clothing, and Dad's going to take pictures. And so they're very picturesque. They're very, yeah. you know, that, that's those type of girls. But, um, yeah, it's like, why not use my... My, my kids and, and have fun with it and um, but I've got cousins and uncles and grandparents that I've used as models so are, are your children and people ask me this all the time are your children artistic or do they show uh, <laughs> yeah the Bane that way like my, all three of my daughters uh, do uh, whether that's they found themselves yet in it but they uh, they're all very creative yeah yeah um, yes the answer is yes um, to that so my son wants to be an artist. <laughs> he just got a job at Whataburger the other day, and I say, "Hey, you keep that job as long as you can. You can do the art on the side because <laughs> it's very, diff- very, very difficult." I'm almost, Leroy. I'm almost wanting to discourage him, but I, I can't do that. I, I can't do that. It's. I feel like you know, I'm mean or something. And well, you said the right counsel. I think when you're starting as an artist, you have to keep one foot in in revenue. <laughs> yeah, that, that it, money has to come in. It was hard. hard. It doesn't keep coming. It's so inconsistent. Yeah, it is inconsistent. Yeah, and then and then my. Uh, 50, Aspen, my so Ure is seventeen. Aspen, sixteen. They both got a job the other day at the same place. So they're, you know, it's, it's just funny. But um, so Aspen, Aspen paints. She paints all the time. Um, she's just afraid to show it to anybody though. Uh, I, I'm telling her, hey, put it on Instagram. You know, people love it. You know, and you can sell this. Come on, Aspen. I mean, you know, your dad does this stuff. You know, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. It doesn't matter. She's so she's a little, you know, apprehensive about that and. Um, so hopefully we can get get her going on Instagram. But um, no, they they um, they're they're interested. They just you know maybe need some guidance. Maybe uh, maybe for Indian Market we can invite them to partake of this little office and and do a Hiram Joe family <laughs> show. How's that? That sounds great. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think that would be that'd be fun. Better work on that. Yeah, yeah. But, but here's the funny thing is that they don't want any help though. Yeah. They don't they don't want me to critique and come over. Oh dad, how do you draw this? They never do that. They just. They're stubborn that way. They want to do it without drawing. <laughs> that, that's interesting. So they, they are having an experience in a life similar to you. If you yeah. think about it, right? Yeah, they um, are. Absolutely. You, your parents have a lot more influence on you than you think in the long run. Um, let's see. What, oh, I wanted to cover this. Um, now, a couple months ago, you reached out to me about uh, wanting to do uh, an expanded career or a little, a little career offside. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. And what was that? Talking about the tattoos. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How's that going? <laughs> it's it's going. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've uh, well I started uh, late June, and I've probably done maybe ten now. Ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I and I have a couple of guys that are and girls too that are walking around with an unfinished tattoo right now <laughs> just because it got too late or something. You know. Yeah. You know, I, I, if you're if you do any te- any ink work, you probably know what I'm talking about, but. Yeah, it's it, it's just a little side deal. Um, didn't make a whole lot of money out of it, but it's something that I did when I was, you know, making the transition from, you know, finishing up at college and then the career in art. Um, learned how to do it back then. I was twenty twenty one something like that. So what what's uh, what's the imagery like that that people are requesting? Yeah, so it's obviously it's it's not what I want. <laughs> it's not like painting what I or I get paint what I want to or, or do what I want to do. Yeah, so it, right now it's it's a lot of tribals, uh, butterflies. Um, turtles, I've, I've done turtles, flowers, things like that, you know. Um, and surprisingly, they've mostly been women that, that wanted uh, tattoos for me. So just design, different designs, and, and usually they'll come up with it, and I'll just. Well, it's become that. such a huge industry. I I, I uh, remember going to Hawaii uh, 30 years ago, and uh, 
we're all on the beach and we're, we're all blank slate. Maybe one person might have a little tattoo. <laughs> and, and now you go yeah. to Hawaii or any beach town and it's all tattoo. And maybe there's very mm-hmm. few like me that's blank. Everybody's all yeah. tatted up. Yeah, and blank canvas. Somebody got something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I think that's good that you're, you're diversifying and stuff. Um, where, where do you have or where would you like to take your career? Uh, let's say you're, you've hit a plateau. Where are you headed? Well, to be honest, uh, I hope I can stay with Blue Rain for as long as I can. I mean, obviously, Blue Rain has goals as well. Um, so as long as I can show here and, and do the Indian Market show, and I actually like would love to do more shows here. Uh, th- that's with the gallery. Um, you know, honestly, I, I don't know that I could. For for me, um, I've I've done uh, you know I've painted the Native American people for twenty years now, and I always will. I always prepare my people that way, but I, I do want to expand into other cultures, um, and and by that I I mean I'd love to get out to Tahiti. I'd love to get. I was say to Polynesian cultures. J- <laughs> Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the cultural terror. I'd love to get out to Spain and just. Um, you know, grow into something more, evolve into other cultures, if they'll let me. I'll start out painting their, their beautiful beaches and then maybe they can see uh, what I can do. And then from there, maybe it'll happen. But uh, with, with all due respect, I, you know, I do, I do, would, you know, do want to ask and, you know, I, I would do all that stuff, make sure it's cool with them. But um, yeah, I'd love to travel the world and just document people and portray them in the most beautiful way, put them on canvas, sculpture, uh, whatever, and, and just... Um, uh, that I think that's that would be cool. I think you know that'd be a good direction for, for my artwork. Well, in the same style. <clears throat> in uh, my perspective, in Hiram in the native genre, uh, as far as oil painters, uh, is is probably the, considered to be one of the best. And uh, I also consider you historian because you're capturing life that's fleeting on the res a little bit. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and those are those are important. I was talking to uh, Jim Bogle the other day about the same thing. You know. Uh, the preservation of our culture mm-hmm. is documented through your, yeah. your paintings. And it, it's, yeah, it's, it's almost beautiful. the same concept. Yeah, yeah. same idea. It's yeah. something that's fading, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, he's he's hanging around all the Spanish people <laughs> are there and getting all their stories. And, yeah, uh, and that's things. exactly right. what it is. We, we got to buddy. We got to have lunch or something sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems like a really cool dude. Well, well that's really cool. Um, tell us about uh, your sculptures. I know your dad was sculpt. Uh, sculpture mostly in stone. I never saw like lost wax or um, um, the, this Bronze. type of clay. Uh, no, the um, oil-based clay. Yeah, uh, the use of oil-based clay from him. I no- normally saw him in stonework. So what what got you into this? The oil-based clay. So you know, obviously, my dad did it for some years. You know, he's got some monuments out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I. I, I <laughs> I think for me, I actually, I actually tried stone carving at a couple. Of, I have a, stone, a couple of stone, stone uh, statues out there and in some trading posts, <laughs> 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 like two hundred dollars. <laughs> that was That's a crazy. long time ago. I did, you know, I just didn't have that touch. I guess you know, I was like, oh man, I, I already chopped this off and I can't put it back on. It's like with the painting, you can. <laughs> and clay does that, right? It's, it's easier, it absolutely. Is. So you know, I, I was, in, I've always been interested in, in sculpture and doing bronze work. And, you know, and I'm, I'm just thinking, well, I've got a dad that had a career in it. So, you know, I thought, okay, so I asked him a few questions and borrowed, uh, you know, little chunks of clay. And I just started. And to be honest, um, Leroy, I, it comes a lot easier to me than painting does. Mm-hmm. The, the sculpture does. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm taking photographs. I've got reference photos I'm using. I'm looking at my little laptop, you know, to paint from. But then the sculpture is like, it's it just comes from memory. It's like, I, like I didn't look at anything. I, I just see something and boom, you know, yeah. well, you're the pretty, drums and you're really like good at it. By so, the way. <laughs> I want to get better, but, uh, yeah. So I have, um, I have a, a sculpture in progress. So I have Geronimo, the Geronimo on horseback. And it's going to be one of the, the last times he's ever been on a horse. Um, I believe it was Theodore Roosevelt's parade. Um, that he was, that he was asked to be part of. And, uh, he rode in that parade in his best, outfit like, like Chiricahua Apache uh outfit and, and that's that's what that sculpture is going to be based off of oh right on well mm-hmm. we'll look forward to that yeah and, uh, um did John Coleman have any influence on you oh yeah on, yeah on the... uh, absolutely mm-hmm. yeah I've been to his studio and you know um I've actually helped him out with a a, a sculpture workshop in Scottsdale the Scottsdale mm-hmm. Artist School oh yeah and I was his apprentice he brought me as his apprentice and he you know had the class and you know but he let me sculpt a little bit there and actually 
the, uh, the uh, sculpture that I started there came to Blue Rain and did real well with that. It was the yeah. Apache Crown Dancer. The Apache Crown yeah. Dancer, yeah. Yeah, that was when yeah. I started there. So, yeah. Well, it's been, stuff. A, it's been a fantastic journey so far. And uh, Hiram, we're, we're looking forward to hanging with you for many years over here. Yeah, so. I hope so. I mean, I'm, I'm 41 years young, so <laughs> I feel 32 and I look 25. So I'll yeah, hopefully be good. around <laughs> a long time. <laughs> well, I'd like to encourage everybody to go to our website, uh, go to YouTube and subscribe to these podcasts. They're really fun, very informative. Um, thanks again, Hiram, for your time. Absolutely. Thanks, Leroy. It was yeah. a pleasure. Have a yep, you too. Thank you.